Elizabeth Warren is out with a, a new book. Actually, I'm not sure it's out out yet, but some people in the media got a copy early. Um, and it it appears just as insufferable as you would think it is. So here's The Hill reporting on it. In her book, Warren largely attributes her loss to a flailing effort to explain how to pay for Medicare for all, according to the Post. She also says that she had to run in the shadow of former Secretary of State Hillary, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, I, there's a typo there, and Martha Co Coakley, who unsuccessfully ran for Senate in 2010. Quote, I had to run against the shadows of Martha and Hillary, Warren said, suggesting that Democrats feared nominating a woman who might lose to Trump again. So, um, in her long book, by the way, she totally dodges the topic of the smearing of Bernie Sanders that she did, where she basically implied that he's a misogynist. Um, she totally dodges that, which I think shows that deep down she, uh, she feels bad about what she did to somebody who was supposed to be her friend. Um, but so the two reasons she gives as to, hey, here's why I lost, her stance on Medicare for all. Now, she doesn't, by the way, say oh, what I should have done is been more unapologetically in favor of Medicare for all and went with the Bernie line, which was, yeah, your taxes are going to get raised, but you're not going to pay any private taxes anymore to a corporation, to a health insurance company, so you're going to net save money. Better care and you save money. She doesn't say that's what I should have done, so it's up to you to try to determine what she thinks the solution is on that front. You know, she might be saying, hey, I just should have not come out in favor of Medicare for all at all. Or I should have never touched the issue. Or it should have been public option. Or I should have given a, di uh, a better way to pay for it. What happened was her answer on paying for Medicare for all pissed everybody off. And it was really Weasley. Um, and it was like... She was trying to have her cake and eat it too and say, nobody's taxes are going to be raised even a penny. And nobody really bought that. And she kind of released a plan that was very weird and and incomplete and it's like a piecemeal approach with band-aids and bubblegum and you know it's not it didn't really make that much sense and her rhetoric on it wasn't great and so it pissed off everybody it pissed off the pro medicare for all crowd who nominally should have been on her side cuz they she says she's for medicare for all and it pissed off everybody else because they were like you just seem like you're trying to avoid a direct answer here. So, is that one of the reasons she uh, went down in the polls? Probably. But I really think it has a lot more to do with the fact that as the campaign went on, she pivoted from being the Elizabeth Warren of the past, which was focused more on, like, Wall Street and regulation and taxes and economic issues. And she became a lot more reliant on social issues and became a lot more reliant on identity nonsense. And the same thing happened with Kamala where when she early on where she was pretending to be in favor of Medicare for all, she was one of the top tier candidates. And then as soon as she stopped talking about economic stuff and healthcare and started leaning into, I think we should ban Trump from Twitter. She just plummeted and she wasn't, nobody liked her anymore. So it was a similar thing that happened with Warren and Kamala, which is, I think that a lot of their, staffers, their advisors, gave them terrible advice about how, you know, you got to lean into the social issues and lean into the identity stuff. And they did that, and then they plummeted in popularity. And, you know, if they just stayed true to the original idea, which is let me actually pretend like I'm economically populist, they could have done well. I really think, especially, um, actually, I was going to say especially Warren, but no, I think both of them could have done phenomenally well. Both of them could have won if they acted more like they were economically populist. Um, but she's, so she's pointing to the Medicare for all thing. Elizabeth Warren is. Yeah. She, I mean, that's a fair thing to point to. Hey, that's probably one of the reasons why you went down. But the other reason is she's like, she basically says, I don't, I don't think the democratic party was going to pick a woman because they just saw a woman lose to Trump. And so it's the fact that I'm a woman. That's one of the main reasons I lost. No, Elizabeth Warren. No, no. There's a reason why at one point you were top of the field. There's a reason why at one point Kamala Harris was top of the field. Obviously, there is no hesitation or, you know, 
skittishness about picking a woman. A woman was picked in 2016. And you guys were leading at various points. The Demo- Nobody who's a Democratic Party voter is holding against you arbitrary characteristics like your gender or your skin color or your sexual orientation. No Democratic voter is going to hold that against you. So really, this is just a bad excuse. It's an excuse to say, well, what was I going to do? You know, I may have messed up on the Medicare for all thing, but ugh, the fact that I was a, I'm a woman didn't, didn't help me. In fact, it hurt me. That's nonsense, and that's a cop-out. And so I'm actually kind of floored at Elizabeth Warren's ability, but also Hillary Clinton was the queen of this in the past. The inability, I should say, to really look for actual answers like, I'm amazed. Aren't you a little curious as to why it went the way it went? Don't you want real answers? Or are you just looking for a band-aid for your ego? So when you put your head down on your pillow at night, you feel like, hey, what was I going to do? It's out of my control. And I really think the answer is there's a lot of ego protection going on with these people, whether it's Hillary Clinton or whether it's uh, Elizabeth Warren. I think that, that she is trying to come up with answers that just make her feel better and not necessarily the true answer, not the correct answer. And I find that pathetic, man. I really do. You need to be ruthlessly self-critical, not just when it comes to politics, but in life in general. You need to be honest with yourself. Um, Because if you're not honest with yourself, what's going to happen in this case? Well, she could run again and she can embarrass herself again because she's not giving the correct answer as to why she lost. So... If she really cared, if she really looked into it, and if she had future political ambitions, you know, she would say, yes, the reason I lost is because I was very heavy on economics and taxes and serious issues early on, and then that kind of faded, um, and I became more social issues focused. Um, If she came to that conclusion, then yes, she could potentially run again and fire all the terrible staffers and bring in ones who care about serious policy stuff, like Robert Reich, for example. Reich, Reich, however you say it. Or or any, any of a number of economics-minded people. Because if she runs again and does that, she would realize, oh, yeah, I did a lot better when I focused on the serious stuff than on the identity stuff and the social issue stuff. So, again, I'm just floored that you can have somebody who is pretending to look for answers, but they're really totally uninterested in getting the right answers, getting the real reason why they plummeted in popularity. And I just find it such a sad, terrible excuse. The, oh, it's just because, you know, I'm a woman and women lost previously, and so people were afraid a woman might lose. No. People saw that you were very opportunistic and careerist and cynical in how you're running your campaign and what the focus eventually became that you lost a lot of appeal, you know? There was a time when everybody on the left thought of Elizabeth Warren as like this serious policy person, the person who gave us the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and pushed Obama from Obama's left. There was a time when a lot of people thought of Elizabeth Warren like that, and then all of that credibility was just blown. And she was uniquely in a position for the 2020 election, too. Why? Because we had Bernie's run in 2016. He fired up the left. Everybody was really excited for him. And the establishment... Uh, you know, candidate in 2016 and ended up getting the nomination, Hillary. So Warren had the potential and the ability to make the argument of like, yeah, I'm sort of halfway between Bernie, the Bernie wing and the establishment wing. And so if you want the compromise candidate, I'm the person. But she uh, she blew it. She blew it massively. And it, it was actually embarrassing. She got no better than third in any primaries or caucuses. No better than third. Even in her home state, she lost. Massachusetts, she lost Massachusetts. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. So, you know, what you should do is look for the right answers. Look for the truth as opposed to just parroting the things that make you feel good. And and I will say, I have a hunch, by the way, that uh, the Medicare for all thing, she is sort of saying, I should have just not said I'm in favor of Medicare for all. I really think that's her takeaway. Because her political instincts are bad, but I think her staffs are even worse, and she listens to her staff. 
thinking that, you know, these are experts and they know what they're talking about. Well, you and them ran your campaign into the ground, so perhaps they have no clue what the fuck they're talking about. But Elizabeth Warren's new book, Persist, um, I'm sure it's going to be terrible, and based on everything we've seen so far, it will be.